In 2007, the Korkendall family was residing in a quiet suburb of Furcrest in the Tacoma, Washington metropolitan area when one of the family's daughters, 16-year-old Courtney Korkendall, began an ominous experience with a phone stalker. It began when Courtney's phone would be constantly sending messages to other numbers including her friends unbeknownst to herself. When her friends questioned her about why they had received a text from her simply saying, gay, Courtney's initial response was to shrug it off. Unfortunately for her, the situation would prove to be much more sinister in the coming days. Eventually, Courtney's family and friends, as well as herself, all started receiving threatening text messages and phone calls from an unknown caller ID dubbed Restricted. They would frequently threaten to kill and rape their receivers, name the school they attended and threaten to attack it, and even threaten to murder their pets. All friends and family affected had agreed to switch their cell phones off, change their numbers, and get new accounts, but the issue would persist. In the middle of a police investigation regarding the looming issue, eerily, all of the phones of the family members turned on and called each other. When coming home from a meeting with local law enforcement about the situation, Courtney received a voicemail replaying a recording of the exact conversation that had taken place with police earlier. Apart from being able to hear everything the family said, Restricted seemed to recount what was being done even in the family's own home, regularly making comments about the family's clothing. One famous instance, the family's eldest daughter, Andrea McKay, was cutting limes in the family's kitchen when she subsequently received a message saying, I prefer lemons. For their own physical safety, the family changed every lock and keypad for their doors in their home. But no amount of locksmithing could fix this psychological torment. One night, an anonymous individual repeatedly and violently banged on the family's door before running off into the dark. Although local law enforcement was unable to make any arrest nor have solidly done any suspects, it is thought that the harassment trailed off from there. People speculate the FBI had gotten involved with the case leading to its falling action. Among all things considered, the only point of notable description of the perpetrator or terrors was that the voicemails left were described as throaty, with juvenile rasps stolen from bad horror movies. If the case was ever solved, no official public statement was released to the Tacoma community.